What's up you guys? Hey, thanks for watching this video. We got a couple of YouTube questions. I thought they were really good. I sort of can answer them, but not really. But I'll give you my perspective, how about that? So the question basically is, does your Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts in undergrad matter? when you're going to medical school, like the type, whether it's mathematics or art or political science, stuff like that. My opinion is it does not. In my experience, medical schools accept students from all different disciplines, but you have to take the prerequisites for the science classes for the med school. So there's chemistry, there's organic, organic chemistry, there's physics, there's mathematics, and some other prerequisites that you have to have in order to go into uh, medical school. If you do like a drama major, then you're probably not gonna be taking organic chemistry and physics in that drama major. So now you have to take extra classes, does that make sense? So that's why a lot of people take just science-based majors when they're going to college. The answer is yes and no. The, the medical school will, will accept you if you have a, you know, a Bachelor in art, of Arts in drama, but you have to have the science prerequisites in order to get into medical school. And also you have to have taken those classes in order to take the MCAT. I know there's Caribbean schools that don't require you to take the MCAT, but I think it's a good exercise actually to, to do just to start building your knowledge of tests, standardized tests, because that's not going to be the last one, and understanding how to take tests, uh, uh, understanding where to get the information to figure out how to take that test specifically because every test is a little bit different in how they want you to take the test and how you how you study for the test and how you uh, take the test and answer those questions. It's very important. People used to tell me, well, you just take tests well, you're not a good doctor. I'm like, <laughs> but there is some validation in that because I did study the test itself and I would study how people passed it and what they were studying to pass that test, what they were studying to get a certain grade in that test. So I would go for the USM Lee, I would, I would search all the forums and say, who is getting 99 and what books are they studying for which subject? So in pharmacology, they would study certain book review series, but in maybe physiology, that same review series was not any good and you have to change to a different book. So that's very important. The other questions are, I went to a Caribbean school, how's living there? How expensive is it? And how's the process to rent an apartment or get a mobile phone and stuff like that? I have another video where I talk about my experience in my Caribbean school where I got in a category four hurricane and we had, you know, like a mess. Their living for me was not bad. I did move apartments a couple times. One semester, I found a total of seven scorpions inside my apartment. So that, if you're not used to scorpions and you're like me and you gag at the sight of scorpions, then it's sometimes a little bit more difficult. But if you're okay with scorpions and getting bit by mosquitoes like nonstop and the power going out like on a daily basis and sort of clean water, not really, you know, the running water you can't really drink, having diarrhea really bad for like a month, all that stuff, then you'll be fine. So for me, I was in, I was in Belize and the school was not really developed that well yet and neither was the island. There was a big tourist population there so they did have a lot of infrastructure so that was fine. So, but I think a lot of these other islands and Caribbean schools, the, the living is, o is okay generally. I can't speak for the other schools but I do see, I do talk to other students and they seem to be much better off than I was. <laughs> so that's good. When I went was 99, okay, or 98 or 99. There was like barely internet at this point. So I got a recommendation from the school of where to stay in an apartment. I called those guys. I talked to the owner of the apartment building and they said, we'll hold an apartment building or apartment for you. And I was like, okay. They're like, you want a credit card or something? They're like, nah, we're good. So that was my, the process of me getting an apartment, which is probably not the same now. And also there was no cell phones. Well, I didn't have a cell phone and none of the other students had cell phones on the, the island. It was 1999. The cell phones were like that big at the time and they were super expensive. So we didn't have those. So I can't really speak to those, but I think if, the, you know, if you stick with the larger schools, St. George, Ross, AUC, you know, St. Matthew's is probably pretty good as far as the living conditions and setting up apartment and cell phone and stuff like that. Cause they're, 
they're on Grand Cayman, which is I've been to before and it's pretty like normal. So those kind of things, I don't think they're that big of a problem. You know, now you have the interweb and like I didn't have that. I feel a little dumb saying that, but that's just the reality of stuff. That's my take on those questions. Thanks for the questions and you guys have any more questions, I'll answer for you. All right, take care.